Hello and welcome to another MTD podcast. This is uh, MTD CNC On The Road. This is the podcast that's filmed and um, broadcast every Friday evening at 6pm. We talk about everything we've been up to in the week that's just elapsed and what we're going to be doing in uh, the days and weeks to come. I'm always joined by compatriots. Um, today I've got uh, Gio and Colin with me. Um, good afternoon. Let's start with you, Gio. I haven't seen you for a couple of weeks. Is that right? Yeah, well, I know I did. I saw you Monday. Monday. <laughs> no, I've not seen you here on this set for a couple hey, of weeks. Paul, all right? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, you're right. I'm very well, thank you. You still you, you're over the um, well. You shouldn't be over the football. You were quite happy with a. I, I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant game. Shut brilliant up. Game. <laughs> We'll come to you. Very close, very close. Shut <laughs> up. I saw Dominic Seminario yesterday. Oh. I was talking to him what about What did he it. think about the game? Well, he, he, was, he was, come on England, come on England. But all his family uh, of it were, were rooting for Italy. So he said there was a little bit of unrest in the camp. Uh, <laughs> Colin, you're right. You look at what you've you been up to today. Well, you it's actually so MTD on the road because I've been on the road in my, in my bike. On, in, on my bike. So I'm um, the... Chris, where, where Chris Broom. Bro- Chris Froome. <laughs> Broom Andal. Where, um, where have you been then on your bike today? Uh, down the shop, get a beer, get a pie, come home. <laughs> uh, car was MO- being MOT'd in service, so I s- dropped it off, cycled home, cycled there, picked up, and then came straight to the straight to this recording. Have you, have you got a, a like a proper road bike? Is it? Is it? I have a proper road bike and a mountain bike. Yeah. Do you use the old cleats for your? Don't feet? use language like that on this. Yes, I do. Look, yeah. there you go. I know it's all good. There they are. And have you ever got into a bit of an awkward situation when you've come to a? Junction? I've got into loads of awkward <laughs> situations <laughs> at junctions. No, but my brother has. He said he came to the lights went red and he couldn't unclip and he just went sideways I've left seen people and some this. bloke <laughs> opened a window and goes you're right mate and he just says leave me alone <laughs> he was just absolutely mortified he was so embarrassed i did that the other week while i was i was running not with a cleat so i, I actually fell over while i was while i was I running fall over when you're over. running i i w- was wearing a different pair of shoes because i didn't have my running Clogs. shoes and I fell over and I, and I just <laughs> went over like a sack of potatoes. And the first thing I did is I got up and I was like, just looking around. Did anyone see it? Fortunately, no one did. So uh, can I just, I've, I don't think you just called us compatriots. I'm not comfortable with that sort of language on the show that what, people are going to hear. What would you, what, what, what would you suggest? I don't know, but compatriots, is that? Colleagues, <laughs> colleagues, maybe. So coming up in this week's um, show, we've been at, and we're going to be talking about Superstar Components, which we were at on Monday, Blue Diamond Engineering on Tuesday. Uh, Hoffman, um, Geo was there this week. We were at Bistronic, uh, Matsura, Lister, Shearings, Sodic, LBC, LBBC, Beechwood and Heller. These are all the topics of conversation that we're going to be discussing um, in this week's broadcast. Uh, but in the news in general, uh, the pandemic. Have you either of you two? Uh, pandemic. I'm double Six hundred thousand people have been. No, it's um, more than that. It's one point three million this no, morning. In, yeah, but in a week. Oh, in a week. Well, yeah, in, yeah, in a week. Six hundred thousand people. Apparently, there's going to be food shortages now um, as a result of this, but don't go out panic don't buying. Don't take it away, Paul. It's not going to be a problem, is it, really, mate? <laughs> well, that's what I've got on my notes to say that about you, actually. Um, Tokyo Games uh, was in doubt, but I believe it's actually started today. It is. And that's, well, that's quite apt, actually, because it's the only reason that you're here, isn't it? Because otherwise, um, you would have been competing if it was in doubt. <laughs> okay, well, and, and what, and what would be I... your field of expertise? Ah, oh, what would I be doing in the Olympics? Watching it, I think that's, that's about the time. I'd be with Tom Daly doing the synchronised diving. <coughs> and, and, and Gio, if you were in it, what would, what would be your event? Now, remember, horse racing doesn't come into <laughs> Boxing. Boxing. Yeah, Boxing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, OK. Oh, is that but where the double old, jab comes in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Left and right. Uh, also in the news, um, a 3% pay rise for the NHS. Good. Uh, what do you think of that? Yeah, do, should it not be more? Absolutely. I mean, if the doctor had to examine your needs, they'd want to be paid more. Well, than the last, last one needed more than 10% pay rise for what he was doing. <laughs> did no, get, I think... Did I, you get rid of of those warts uh, it was worse than that but it's all, cl- it's all cleared up now but I, I know it's not a political debate your brother NHS. used to compare your warts with your favourite food didn't he or which was your favourite pudding and what was that <laughs> spotted dick <laughs> <laughs> well, no it's more like rice krispies <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, what, let's, what have I... Oh. But no, um, yeah, it's a bit of a contentious <laughs> issue, this 3% pay rise. Um, obviously deserve a, a lot after what they've been through Absolutely. in the last uh, year or so. But in manufacturing this week, factory output, uh, employment and orders rising at their fastest rate for almost 50 Where years. Where did you see that information? So as always on the MTD MFG channel, right. um, of course, you can listen to the Great British Manufacturing Podcast, which is hosted by Joe Reynolds and um, Jefferson on a Thursday. But there's loads of good stories in manufacturing. Of course, we're going to be talking about the the machining side and the, the engineering company side in today's show. But that's that's really good. In fact, the survey of over two of 250 manufacturing businesses reported output increasing in 16 out of 17 subsectors. 
which obviously includes the ones that we know about in general, like motor vehicles, transport equipment, food, drink, and one that's close to your home, tobacco, or used to be. No, I haven't had a cigarette for at least 10 minutes, but drink, I'm <laughs> happy with that. But can I say, those statistics in terms of output and things like that, was that from the ONS op op office, uh, office of National Statistics? I couldn't tell you. You'd need to check on what the What can you tell me? I think, would you, you sit right next to me? Just tell need, me. You'd need to check on the MTD okay, website. Okay, because but it's that is pertinent to the... MTD EEI, Engineering Economic Indicator, because I've just filmed the results for June. Do they correlate with what you've just said? Probably. I'm not going to so. tell you. You've got to watch a video when it's coming out very, okay. very soon. Okay. Well, we do obviously do our own economic uh, indicator, as Colin said. And um, I can only say from the visits that we've done this week, it, that should be very encouraging as well. Yep. I want to talk about superstar components to start with, um, Gio. Uh, Neil Wilkinson there, real entrepreneur, isn't he? Um, yeah. What a, what a great company. I've, it, it, I, so I know you're going to talk, and I'm sorry to uh, cut across <laughs> you, but I, I was there about four years ago, and then there was only like three machines in the machine shop, but now there's a plethora of, of, a of plethora. Kits. I think he only started 10 years ago. So right. so from 10 years ago, when he wasn't, wasn't even an engineer. Um, he used to kind of um, dabble in bikes. He used to buy components for bikes from Taiwan and, and effectively just sell them on, on the internet. Um, and then when kind of um, lead times started to become a problem, he thought about starting to manufacture his own. And that's how it all started. And, and, and from someone that wasn't, wasn't an engineer and started from scratch. Or was he not an engineer? No. I didn't know that. It was a physici physicist. <laughs> oh, all these words, you've got physicists <laughs> and plethora and all that. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know what a physicist is, don't you? you tell us, enlighten us. Cans Coke. Uh, <laughs> Phys physicist, he's, into, he's a... Um, a chemist. Phys he's into physics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Okay. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. So, wow, uh, so what a journey for him. I mean, oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. He, he, do you know he lives in Banbury, doesn't he? But yeah. his his actual facility is in Lincoln. What? And he, yeah. I mean, he, he does he does stop at. I think his his family, his mum and dad are from from Lincoln. So he I think he stays there sometimes in the week. But he does commute a lot as well, backwards and forwards, which is a hell of a journey. That's a long yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. the the biggest thing that stood out f for me from that visit was that, you know. It was everything that we talk about on MTD all the time. If, you know, especially on your last Swarth pool where it was like kind of fully utilising a, a VMC. Well, he's not just only fully fully utilising a VMC. He's fully fully utilising every single machine tool that he's got there to its absolute. Uh, maximum capability you know whether that be presenting as many components to the spindle the the correct work holding the correct tooling automation of for, for an engineer that machine. was not an engineer he's kind of doing everything the engineer right. should do isn't he but i think it's because he's he's, not, he's got no fear he's got no fear and he's looking at it and thinking right how can i be um reduce my cost per part and increase my profitability through what I've got, you know, so he started with his first machine and, and completely got the absolute most that he c could out of that. And then that kind of journey continued throughout his workshop. And I mean, he's got some of the, some fantastic machine I, tools there, hasn't he, Paul? Uh, yeah, and I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but he, he, the, the, the loyalty to one or t'other is, is not really demonstrated either, is it? I know he's got a, a couple of Haas machines in there because they've been fantastic for him, but he's also not scared to, to just go and buy, well, uh, do you know what? Actually, that, that machine's right for me. He's got a, a, a brother... Um, Speedio milled MX140, I think it is, which is a, tur a, a machine that can turn as well as, as mill. He's got star sliding head lathes. He's got Doosan and turning centers. Matt he's got Sura a Ma Matsura Man machine. Oh. Yeah. So but when you look at the shop, there's just, just machines both, that are dedicated to applications. Both those things go completely against the grain now because what you're saying is he's probably come in with a complete open book whereas an engineer's been in, in the industry 20, 30 years, so he's not set his ways, but whereas he's gone, well, I can do this and I can automate this. And also he goes to a lot of machine shops now, just one machine, whether it's Star or Citizen or Hass or whatever, but he's, he's well, not blinkered by that, well, is yeah, it? I'm not well, saying think, that they're blinkered, well, but... I, no, I think that you're absolutely spot on, because I think that, so you know, if you go back 10 years, if you'd have That's been... You, you, well, you think that of engineers at the minute, you know, <clears throat> a, a, a very skilled engineer has probably been in the industry 30, 40 years, He's just come into it 10 years ago with completely open eyes and he listens to people like MTD where we're saying, right, you need to use automation, you need to yeah. have the best work holding. You need. So he's, he's actually embraced technology and believed in technology. But then when you look at companies that maybe have been going 40 years plus, 
they've got stuck in their ways in a bit and they've well, been maybe fear of to change. Well, just fear, fear of... Fear of changing yeah. as well. Okay. When you look at fear the... Fear of the unknown. The reason we were actually there was to look at their, their Haas automated cell, wasn't it? The turning centre, the ST10Y compact turning machine with, the, with a gantry loading system on it, which sat very neatly to the left of the machine, but was no bigger than a bar feed. And um, it just offered him complete unmanned running, didn't it? And and for the yeah. cost of it, I mean, I can't remember the exact numbers that James and um, Neil under, were talking. Under, under, uh, under £100,000. So yeah. you've got for, a... For, for a cell there that yeah. keeps running. You the know, milling it's, capability. It's, do you see many of those? The way access. Gantry, because I, I've, I've not seen it, the house with gantry load on it. Do you see many of them? No, the, this, I think this is the second or the third that they've got into the country. But oh, it's right. a new product. It's, a, it's, it's a new well product. established in America. Right, yeah. Very well established in America. And I think that... that, that I think... That, from what they told us, they were waiting for it to be well established in America before they brought it yep. into the UK. Mm. And then with, with Haas being such, they've got quite good technical support in the UK to be able to back that product up. But mm. some of the, I mean, there's a video released on MTDCNC um, today um, that shows the full range of Haas machine tools, automation, ancillary equipment, and all the solutions that they offer. So it's worth having a look at that video because it's quite staggering really and they've also got a fanic robo drill which has got an automated pallet system on it which i, I forgot about that one because that's that was where i went and that's making and the see. pedals isn't it that's Paul? making the pedals and and he I, I love the way he would say yeah and if i get this particular contract i'm having six more of those <laughs> i really wow. yeah yeah and if i get this particular contract i'm going to get three of those because that's the best machine for it and that's the best solution for that and you know so i don't think he's I don't think he gets a project and goes, right, I'm going to I'm going to get Haas to quote, I'm going to get them to quote, I'm going to get them to quote and whoever comes with the best price I'm going to no. buy. He goes, I know what I need, I need another one of those. And that's what So I'm the gonna, best uh, machine the for that best job. Best machine, not for the best the job price okay. and the and the best solution. I, I love his business um, strategy and philosophy. I think it's fantastic. I think he's looking to completely automate everything. I think he's even looking to to automate now his next steps is the dispatch and the fulfillment by putting it through a fulfillment house. So he, he wants to basically just completely uh, automate the complete process. All of the parts are being sold on e-commerce website, and I, and I love it. Is he still I doing the bike parts? Um, I don't think he's buying parts now. He's just making them. All no, but he, he's still making bike parts though, because you said yeah. that's when he started. He's still doing it, that. That's what that that what what started him making the parts was that he was struggling with lead times and yeah. costs and quality issues from getting them from China mm. or Taiwan. That's what started him making the parts, and now he's got about sixty six thousand different variants of parts that he's selling, right. um, like which is which is massive. So the simple answer to my question is yes. He is, yes. He is. But <laughs> I tell think you what, he, yeah. he's also he's also doing some subcontract work as right. well. He's using his uh, what he's learned in in the traditional sense for his product to to go into yep. other sectors and actually okay. subcontract work. And he's very very competitive with it as well, which is why he wins business. Understandably so. There's only a few of them there, isn't there? But there's, yeah. there's all these machines, and they're it's just if it's just, all automated and just churning chur parts out. Okay. Uh, that was a great visit. I think the highlight for Ian on that was the fact he left at five uh, five thirty p.m. after you. Um, uh, I phoned him up. He was in the car. I said, Ian, we booked a table at the restaurant because we were staying up north um, for half past seven. And he says, Oh no, I'm going to make that. He says, I've just left and I'm bloody starving. He says, I've only had two bananas all day. <laughs> he had an ice cream as oh, well. Oh, he had an ice he cream, an ice cream and he was offered. Uh, a non-alcoholic beer as, yes, as well, I believe, yeah. but he turned that down because he would have rather it have been an alcoholic <laughs> one. Wow. Um, tough then, times. <laughs> yeah, tough times, but it was a really good company. I would encourage you to watch uh, those videos on Superstar Components, which will be coming out in due course. We are also uh, this week at um, Blue Diamond Engineering. Myself and Did Mark you, went to Blue Diamond Engineering to the look at the night before I had a blue thing, though, didn't it? Didn't you go to the was it the Blue Oyster Bar? Because it was, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? Was yeah. it Freedom? It was Freedom Day on Monday. Freedom, yeah, it was Freedom. So you, yeah. and yeah, yeah, how free did you get? Pretty, pretty free, yeah. We had a great time. We had a really good meal. Prawn, yeah. prawn linguine with some classic Malbec, as we always have. Malbec, that's Malbec. a car. And then we went Italian to a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was on, <gasps> on the menu. And then we went to... Uh, we, said, we said to uh, Ian, we said, Ian, you've, okay, you've you had your pay. two bananas. <laughs> <laughs> you've had your prawn linguine in your mouth. But do you want to go to a bar? And he was like, no, I'm not going to a bar. I'm, I'm, I'm going home. So me and Mark did. We went out and had a drink. And it was, yeah, very, very, uh, very good night. That is not an MTD video we're going to be showing soon, though, is no, it? No, okay. no, no. We wouldn't, we wouldn't show those. The Lord for that. Um, we, we went to Blue Diamond. What a great company this is. I mean, this is, I, I love it when you go further, when you go north and you see how, how the size of parts generally tend to change. They get much bigger, don't they? Bigger castings. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they get much bigger castings. And there they were making the weights for the wind turbines. You know the things that, s that, that spin that you see on the sides of the, the road? They they have like balance weights on them that he still does. <laughs> we went to a company. I know the, you, you, the, the shenanigans that we all get up to when when we're out and about. There was Speak a guy yourself. that commented um, about when you guys went to was it Taiwan or one of the exhibitions in Taiwan yeah. when you were in that restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and yeah, you'll yeah, get yeah. to who was it, Paul? It was just I, I think that was Neil. I think it Monday. might have been Neil from yeah. Superstar. It just made me laugh because you know we make all these videos behind the scenes and stuff. Oh, and yes. We were in the Thai restaurant. and I think we were filming all the the hot Thai. I think you could remember you going to the toilet in the <laughs> yeah because that's a classic because you go shall i go left or oh, shall i go right right yeah. and he went i'll go right and then walked off left yeah, yeah. into the ladies <laughs> yeah yeah that, oh that was very funny yeah yeah but yeah they, they're a really good company they bought a Corrier and a dmg a dmg mori dmu 95 almost a million pounds worth of investment wow. or maybe even over that in in the last 12 months on these two machines both with very different purposes the Corrier norma 20 which is a big uh, bed mill um, with a UAD head on it to get to multiple positions to give them the ability to to machine side faces and, and, and do multi-face machining. Before, they were doing it in an old, in, in the old way of going into the machine and undoing the head and, and tipping it, re, you know, clamping it um, to, you know, so the operator intervention that they used to face was unbelievable. I don't it's know the machine. machine. Is, is, it, is it completely... A gantry style? Travelling travel travel column travel machine. Oh, okay. With, Great open access for loading these big uh, castings and castings, but castings yeah, and castings, castings and castings. But they were they some of these castings were actually they were huge, but they were weights that go into the um, what do you call these wind turbine things, the end of the the blade almost to balance it out. So you know when when one's coming down, it obviously it needs weight to to keep it rotating as well as wind. These these are weights they're machined to go I suppose in suppose it's to balance it like you balance a wheel. Like exactly, yeah. That, that are becoming quite popular up north. Is that the same, or same turbines, assumption to no, make? Wind turbines everywhere, I, mate. I, I, th I think the, the, co the Corrier machines, travelling column bed mills are popular solutions because they've got big working envelopes. This has got over two metres where you can secure a part. You've got bigger Y-axes, so you've got over a metre in the Y-axes. So for tool makers, mould makers... Um, press press tools, you know, or you just want to put more parts on a table. You you can obviously do that with the machines. And yeah. Paul, with the with, with the DMG Murray DMU ninety five, the fifth axis machine. I went on their website to check this machine out, and it offers um, a couple of forms of automation with that machine. Yeah, different uh, options, whether the, with, with its C loss control or even hide and I. What was it equipped with? Paul? Well, the, the 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 thing, the interesting thing that I found out is is, is Dean was there or. Um, from or uh, it's Dane or Dean, I can't remember, and you have to forgive me. Was there from uh, DMG, <laughs> Mor DMG Mori and was talking about the fact that the DMG Mori DMU 95 monoblock is a machine that's packaged together with certain options all bolted together from an economies of scale perspective to be a real attractive purchase. Um, the actual machine itself comes, I think, it's standard with 60 tools. Uh, it's got full five axis machining capability, but the thing I really like about these, these big monoblock machines is their stability and one of the things the guys say is it doesn't matter what you're machining with one of these five axis machines it can be a huge block of titanium it can be aluminium you've got speed power you've got three-year warranty on the spindle i love the way the trunnion table is configured so you can you've got your rotary axes inside of what is a much bigger flatbed machine so if you wanted to do bigger parts you can secure them outside of that rotary it's table got that well. kind of knuckle yeah. Oh no, no. That that's the um, the, the monoblock is a trunnion design, which is supported as it e, 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 either, either side. Right. Okay. Yeah. Whereas some of the DMG Mori machines, they they take the head to the part, they move the head to the part. So if you've got a, an axis in the head which tips, you'll get your your fifth axis machining by taking by moving the head to wherever the part needs to be. Whereas with the monoblock machine, they're big, they're heavy, they can move the part to the head. So the head is kind of in a fixed position. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, yeah, explaining yeah. that correctly. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. perfect. I'll tell you what, I think in terms of automation, the I answer think... to your questions, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the short answer is no. <laughs> but in, in a nutshell, watch a video. That's that probably yeah, will explain but, it yeah. a lot. Like, it surprised me because such a big fifth axis machine tool to automate it, like yeah. a standard uh, solution from DMG Murray, I thought that was quite impressive yeah. because I, I think that whether that be um, high volume or low volume, it can it can be done. And I think that it's, again, another sign of, of people now. 
have got such great options when they're looking for these solutions. Uh, you know, they, they, they're available now. And their control, their, their, the CLOS front end is like an app-based um, programming aid to be it for, yeah, for shop floor management and all that sort of stuff as well, which is, which is you know, all part and parcel in the DMG Mori offering. But as, as for a company, the investment made it really good to see in two incredible machines. Um, so it was, yeah, great visit. Um, Gio, you went for, you, you had a, a good bite to eat with your, your friends at Hoffman as well, didn't it you? Was, it was brilliant, Paul, actually. What did you like, have? It's, I, did had, um, I had salmon um, and pasta. It was like on a bed of pasta. I've never really had anything yeah. like oh, that. So, so was, salmon it, pasta? It, it was, no, it was actually a whole salmon on, on like pinny pasta. It was, it was absolutely delicious, really nice. Pesto it, sauce on top? No, it's like a, a ragu sauce. Right. Uh, straight, was, straight from the... Straight very, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> and it was nice to see John. He's, he's back. Um, and we had some really good discussions about the coming months. From uh, Hoffman are going to be launching some new cutting tool products, which we'll be re reviewing on MTD um, through technical corners and hopefully at, at an exhibition. We're planning for a live event that's hopefully going to be coming soon. Um, Can you give us a little teaser on what, what sort of... It Tools they're going to... I'm not sure myself. It's not okay. even been, re been revealed to me yet. So, But they, they will be coming soon, apparently very innovative. And there's some new uh, packages that they're going to be offering to end users that we're going to be reporting on as well, which is, is, is very exciting. Well, they've stuff. got some great products because we were at um, Cutting Blue the other week and they've got some Hoffman Cutting... Yeah. Um, I think, were they face end mills? I can't remember what tools they were, but he said they're, they are a little bit more, but I think 30% more, but they can cut through the material about three times faster. It was absolutely amazing. And longevity, Colin. Yeah. With no, the, me, with me or the tools. <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> but he was absolutely, he was raving about yeah. an absolutely fantastic product. Um, it, well, it's glad to see that John's well, back in yeah. uh, back in action. Um, yeah, keep well, John. Uh, we're also going to talk about, coming up in the show, visits to Hella, Lister Shearings, LBBC, Beechwood, Matsura, Sodic, and plenty of other things about um, the magazine, which we're going to talk about, which is, uh, has just hit desks as well. But on the channel this week, uh, so you know, um, if you do visit the MTD CNC channel on YouTube or the website, you can see uh, videos from Mazak, uh, that was shot at GW Martin, um, myself and Jason Butler and Richard Blake, over 8,000 watches on uh, a couple of videos in literally a few days. Um, Geo, great video that's been launched, which we know Leader CNC have had an inquiry for today, uh, was on their DMC um, Dolly Parton machine, which we spoke about <laughs> last week. Was it you? Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. I was there, Dolly Parton. Politically <laughs> incorrect, but Dolly very Parton good. Machine, 2,000 <laughs> watches on that. If you're, if you're after um, yeah, a machine that can provide you with flexibility on higher volumes uh, just for turning, then this front-facing Dolly Parton style machine is A twin spindle. Twin spindle machine just with, with, with a gantry. Twin yeah. Again, we talk about the gantry. I just think it's a perfect machine for if you're just doing turning. I think it's such good value for money, Paul. Yeah. We've said it, yeah. and uh, with stacking systems either end, it's just yeah. great yeah. solution. Uh, also, news on the website from Mill CNC, Horn, Hexagon, Herco, Fanuc, and Prima Power, uh, who are new to MTD CNC. So visit the website to. Um, so to those who don't know Prima Power. Uh, so Prima Power um, sheet sheet metal. Uh, so press brakes, pre pre and the like. press brakes. But beyond that, really, now got into additive manufacturing as well. Oh. Combination machines. If you want to punch, bend, um, shear, fold these machines. You right. know, you can buy machines now. It's a bit like when we went to was it Euro Black? Euro Black or, yeah. You see these machines now. Where it's amazing. They can make cabinets like this in like one machine. It folds there. It punches there. It, <laughs> it, yeah, it, it does. It, 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 it pulls it back and forwards, turns it around, uh, presses. Universal. Very yeah, universal. completely. But it universal. changes. They have the automation, changing all the tooling in the in the throat, or whatever it's called. It's uh, it's amazing. Well, we we were at Bistronic as well yep. uh, this week, and that's oh. a, a, another company What's that the showroom they've got there. Those machines. Looking forward to doing some work within the um, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, Colin's got to go to the Isle of Wight though to do a, a, a job there so um, that's I've booked a week is that where they training. do the, the, the bike racing there the motorbike right the motor what, that's Isle of Man Isle of Man what are you saying I'll, I'll take my bike yeah I've, I've got all the gear <laughs> you no know idea that's, the, that's called the TT or something isn't it Isle of Man TT yeah because uh, they, they open it up to just normal people not proper racers and invariably one or two people get killed every year yeah it's, it, well Ian yeah. used to film there as well didn't he oh did he yeah um, anyway another uh, company we're going to be doing a lot more with in the, in, in the coming weeks and months we were at this week Hella uh, based in Redditch we were there and we'll be looking and talking in more detail about UK manufacturing of machines mm -hmm. they make the horizontals there on site um, using a flow line system it's brilliant to be able to go into a factory and once again we often have to go overseas to see that but not here in the UK you've got Hella and Mazak that are making machines here in the UK. You be, that was my question. How many other machine? Well, how many machine tool companies are actually manufacturing in the UK? So Mazak, Hella, 
yeah, there'll be companies that, that that maybe assemble things and stuff like that. But in terms of actually where you can see them machining castings, um, preparing spindles, putting it all together, um, you know, putting the controls on the machines, all the calibrate, all of that stuff is done uh, in Redditch for Hella. Because right. that's good for supply chain because at the moment, even very basics, I ordered, I'm trying to order some stock for, for MTD on totally separate to machine tools, obviously, just small six months waiting time for these things and previously it was two weeks yeah well, th so well, this is the this is the problem isn't it this is the problem that everyone's facing not just across industry but but yeah hella are making machines there with their filming a, a video about corporate style about how the journey of making a machine and why you should should be looking at hella and what Absolutely. they what they produce mm -hmm. lister shearings um joe was here this week they're a global leader in guess what shearing Sh I visited them years and Did years you? ago. Did well, you? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen well, they're leading sheep. supplier in. Sheep shearing. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I visited them. They've, they've, they've been going for such a long... I've seen the video... So uh, what, 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 what do they make this for sheep shearing? Just like blades? Yeah, the, the, the blades and the, they, make, they make the whole like, the whole shabam, really, yeah. Like they, clippers that you they, use. They're like clippers, But yeah. just for sheep? Thanks, exactly, yeah. yeah. Wow. They must be must be quite big and and uh, they'd give you a quick haircut. Yeah. So Joe was there. Um, they were, he was talking about uh, the the um, increased tool life. So they're obviously manufacturing these things. Everything from zero. Got the agricultural the agricultural, agricultural industry. industry yeah. Um, they've just taken delivery of also of their fir of the UK's first Doosan T three thousand six hundred D twin pallet vertical machine which I'm surprised it's the first one to go into the market. I saw that machine some time ago. I know Doosan do well with all their VMCs, but twin pallets are a good way of in increasing productivity, which is clearly what Lister Shearings are, have uh, have done here. Um, so there'll be a good video coming out. I'm, I'm hopeful that Joe's gone through the process and we can actually look at what they're making. No and hair, then, though, and then uh, <laughs> Not now he hasn't. He, he went with a massive afro. And his <laughs> that, perhaps him using them afterwards would, would be a good video. No. Uh, LBC uh, Beachwood, Joe's... LBBC, is LBBC uh, Beachwood, uh, Joe's there today um, exploring DC Swiss tooling solutions. Um, Sodic as well was a visit that Lindsay was at yesterday with uh, Chris Hellyer. And I tell you what, they've got some pretty... In a, well, incredible technology, which is just... You couldn't say innovative, could you? <laughs> it's just surfaced. Um, it's on their wire erosion machines. And now, um, I know you went through an exercise, Colin, some time ago, <sighs> really Look trying to You know I haven't been through exercise. About EDM, didn't you? Absolutely. Sparking, wire Electronic cutting. discharge machining. Yeah. Have you ever heard of this, right? Um, wire that spins when it's cutting. No, I just thought it was like... In very simple terms, I just thought it was a piece of wire, like going through a ball of cheese, and in very as a simple analogy, not and, spinning as well. And it is, but this on this machine wow. it spins. Why? Um, because it gives you a better surface finish. It also gives you a longer lasting of the wire because you're using all the edges. Oh, that's, yeah, fair play. So you imagine if you're cutting that yeah. ball of cheese, you're using one edge of the wire, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Whereas if the wire spins, you're able oh. to to use more. But all, ADM all gives all it's good, it's good good surface finish anyway. So to improve yeah. on that, so it improves on that, but it also improves the life of the wire, the surface finish, and the accuracy because you're able to control the wire in a much better way. What about the speed, Paul? I bet I would assume it. It, it could be even faster. Could be even faster. As well, yeah. yeah, it could be even faster. But again, EDM, it is fast. Uh, not fast, no, fast is probably not the right word at all. Sorry, that's completely wrong. I'll take a step back. We'll delete that bit. It, it's, a, it's, it's an unmanned process. Accurate. It, it's already accurate and already super super good surface finishes. So yeah. it's taken it even to a next level. Yeah, I mean, you, wow. can, can, you don't have to polish parts and stuff like that anymore. So um, it's, oh, it's brilliant. It's set an up to 30% up to saving on the wire as well. And this has never been done before. So new from Sonic. Uh, should be interesting to watch that video. Sodic or Sodi Tech? Uh, Sodic Machines, which right. is from Sodi Tech here right, okay. in the UK. Um, I was then at Matsura yesterday as well with Dominic and uh, Ian Mitchie and, and Sam. It was good to look at the new MAM 7252V, which is uh, wow. coming out. Now, their MAM machines, we talk about, we saw oh. all the Superstar components. They're everywhere, aren't they? I mean, you know, these, are, so these are machines that have got decades of, of heritage behind them, of... of, of you know, proven themselves time and time again. Now, the 52V is an interesting step for Matsura because it's it's kind of them developing a machine which is slightly bigger than the 32, but not as big as the as the 72. It's it, it's really bridging a gap. But where they're one of the angles is the MX520. You know how popular the MX525 axis machine has been. 
I see Colin look up thinking, him. No, I'm thinking. I'm just, I know, it's, well, it's not wind, I am thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can smell the wood burning from here, yeah. <laughs> the the <laughs> MX520 is, a, is a, a, a five axis machine that they introduced a four pallet system onto it some time ago so they could auto, automate the MX520. Sold hundreds of them. I mean, a, a brilliant machine, accurate, very, very cost effective. It's been one of. Matsura's machines that's taken them into a lot of subcontract companies that previously would have thought they couldn't afford a Matsura. Dom used to say, you know, once you've had, you can have an MX520, you can touch and feel and taste Matsura. That was his way of saying it. And it, it, it um, you know, it's proven many time and time again that it's taken people to the next level within their business. Now, the M the Imam 7252V is an extension of the 520 in terms of its capacity, but now in a MAM format. So you've now got 15 pallets instead of the four. And so oh. it's, it, it's just, if you bought a 520, the chances are you'd have grown your business. The chances are you'd be then looking at the next step of unmanned lights out machining. And this will just fit perfectly into Does that. the 52 yes. relate to the working envelope, which is 520? About, about, yeah, yeah, I think that's so right. I'm presuming the, the seven... table size. I think you can get slightly bigger parts, but yeah. So the 72 is... is... Is a much bigger machine. But of course, that then costs more. So people yeah. go, do you know what? I don't need something that big, but I do need something that could fit in the 520. I, I think Matsura yeah. are doing an unbelievable job, aren't they? They're, 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 they're doing such a fantastic Brilliant. job. You never you never hear anything bad about Matsura anywhere. That, you know, everyone sings their praises. Yeah. And I think Dom's doing a fantastic job as well. And the rest, <coughs> not just Dom. <coughs> well, the old team. I mean, they're, 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 and, they're and doing, they're yeah. doing a, a, an absolutely amazing Mark job. Mark Cumberland as well down south. I saw him the other week. Do you know what his nickname is? Sausage? Yeah, that, did you know that? No, I just, <laughs> I just guess that. Yeah. I just guess that. What? Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Oh, oh please. Okay. You've never had a Cumberland sausage? That's, that's not, oh, my, that's not for this programme. <laughs> moving on. Uh, moving on. So uh, the MTD magazine, the July issue uh, is out and hit desks this week. If you are watching this podcast, which of course you can on YouTube and will be on YouTube, this is the magazine that came out. It's another tremendous uh, edition. Uh, 68 pages, I believe, of quality content. Um, which includes stories from the AMRC. Uh, it includes uh, stories from when we've been out and about traveling around. I know one specific one, um, Ashby Engineering, about their Belia machine. Plenty and plenty of, of, of topical information in there. Also, a good feature on the aerospace uh, sector too, which is obviously at the, the tip of everyone's tongues at the moment as to when it's going to start uh, motoring again. So if you don't have... Do a copy of this you can subscribe through the MTD CNC website it really is a great read you can, can I just say two yeah. things a a lot of unique content because we can do it on the back of our videos which is so we're first to market with these stories which makes it such a great read the second thing is we I was on a meeting with um, Lee from Fast Dems the other day and he goes I tell you what your magazine is market leader by, yeah. by I, a long, I've, long I've heard that many many occasions actually um, and it's it's not surprising because we you know we do work hard the guys work hard to produce top quality editorial content um but yeah you can subscribe to it you can also listen to it as well because there's an audio book available so you know how good is that whether you if you can't read like geo, geo you can listen to it <laughs> brutal um well, if you can't spell like reese the editor i've just spot, spotted a couple of typos here i'm joking don't tell i'm joking reese of yeah. so um so that's available tony gunn uh, if you do follow tony he's been uh, actually in this in in las vegas this week i wouldn't show it. Uh, he's he's Jealous. been doing lots of live streams on LinkedIn um, during his his visit to this Las Vegas show. It was all about kind of woodworking, but all the traditional equipment supplies were still there because, of course, what we do isn't just about cutting metal, is it? It's, yeah. it's about um, cutting wood as well. Um, next week, holidays. Well, I'm off actually for a few days. Um, hey, where are you going? Actually, I'm can I just interject there, if, if you know what that means? Because I got a text this morning about seven o'clock, woke me up <laughs> from, from G Gio. Colin, what are we going to do? What are you on about? Because just seen a text from Paul that he's he's scarping off on holiday. He's had a sudden, you know, last minute thing, and he's gone. What are we going to do? <laughs> I, I like. I just thought. I don't. Want, I know Joe's here. I thought. What are you on about? You long cut. Anyway, I said no. You're wrong, mate. Anyway, I checked the check the text, and it was correct. There was a text that said you've just got a last minute thing, and then I checked the date. It was about eighteen months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, so I went back to bed for another hour. <laughs> That yeah. group had not been used since, since last year. year. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm not. Uh, so uh, I'm, well, I'm not luck I'm unluckily going abroad next week. Um, mm. I'm actually off for a few days, but I'm actually playing golf at JCB oh. as well on Tuesday. So 
Uh, you better pre- oh, very nice. prepare, yeah, the grounds, <clears throat> prepare the groundsman there, I would say, for a f- few divots with uh, that's the star. Two divots, yeah, you and Gio playing uh, golf. I, 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 I genuinely can't wait for that. Um, we do have other visits in the calendar, but it is certainly quite an offer for the summer period. I know you're at Colchester Machine Tool, or you're at Pro Drive next week with Colchester, aren't nice you, where they've got a new uh, showroom in the south. Um, but keep tuned to the channel. Uh, any any final thoughts? I've got a couple, guys? Of, couple of quick on. things because I haven't. I haven't like you notice, know, I haven't been much on the road because I've been doing the SSS. You know what SSS is, don't it's you? It's an uh, alliteration. Correct. Hey, you do learn something. Yeah. Absolutely. S- the Swarf Slider Special. I've, and I've learned so much. And you, well, you help me with it. It's coming yeah. out very soon. A lot of work went into it. So big thank yous to... Well, I won't say who. You have to watch the show. But I've got a couple of questions. What is another name for a slider? Uh, Swiss Auto. Anything Swiss type. Swiss Any type. other name? Uh, oh, I do know this, you know, because I... I oh, it's, it's like a man's name, isn't it, or something? Is it Derek? Anything? Yeah, they're called Derek <laughs> machines. No, absolutely not. I found uh, that's another thing I learned on, on for this show. So watch the show to find out what they're and legitimately what they're also called and how long apart. I won't ask. Well, I won't ask you, Paul. Uh, you should know because you were two you, minutes. Th- how long apart can you make on a slider? Do you reckon? I know how long bar feed you can do three meters, but yeah, the part the part. I, I'd, I'd say five hundred mil length. Right, okay, well, I'm going to say you're wrong. Or you could actually, you could feed it through to the second Ooh, spindle, geo. so you could actually do... Don't give it all away, you watch, you, watch the show to find out more, but you, meters, yeah. you will be surprised. That's wrong though, Gio. I don't <laughs> know. I'm looking pressure. forward to that show, that will be out in early August. I'm uh, working well, hard on August it, but I need... Feature. Mo- yeah. um, that's One other thing though, that, can I... I can it. Carry on. <laughs> that alliteration. The EI we mentioned earlier, but there's some... Intro- well, I like to think there's some interesting stuff. Do you know that... Yeah, engineering is positive, and it's been positive since we started, which is absolutely fantastic for About the industry. Six minutes ago, it really is. Was it, how long? How do you know that? Yeah, uh, but a couple of worrying things possibly. All very possible. Inflation is potentially up, which will affect us all. Interest rates potentially going up. They forecast. Well, actually, I won't say you have to watch your EI, but they could be potentially going up. So, is that a reason to purchase equipment now and get something? Fixed? I wouldn't like to give. I wouldn't like to give advice on that. But yes, but interest rates haven't gone up for years. I, have thought, they? I thought the interest rates were actually coming down. They can, no, they're at point one at the moment. Lowest have been forever. I mean, so, uh, so what do you do? You genuinely uh, have you you hearing on your on you know the jungle drums that what what they're going to go up to and when is this going to happen? No, do you think? Paul, don't take this the wrong way. If I knew. A, when they're going up, what they're going up to, I would be putting, I would be doing all sorts of derivatives and things like that, yeah. and I'll be sunning myself in Barbados on my third cocktail by now. <laughs> I'd be a very rich man. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that, and if I did, toodaloo. <laughs> no, I'm not going to the loo, I'm toodaloo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gia, any, any final thoughts from you before I wrap this one up? No, another positive week. I think it's great to, to see that engineering, but it's, it's not really, it's, it's, it's picking up, but it's not really gone down, I don't think. I think that, you know, you go out there, the people that have invested continue to invest, it seems to just be going from strength to strength yeah. and it's great to be going around and, and reporting on all these positive stories. Good Brilliant. stuff. So final thoughts from me. Um, do you know what the average height of a man is, Gia? S- oh, five foot eight. <laughs> no, not your height, Gia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five foot 11. No, it's five foot nine, actually. Is it? No. Yeah. Seriously, I'm five foot seven, so I'm not oh, yeah, that yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, five foot nine. Uh, <laughs> it's not five Is that worldwide, nine. obviously? That's worldwide, yeah, it takes into but account But not in the Netherlands. China. Do you know what and the average height in the Netherlands is? It's taller. It is much taller. It's six foot. Six foot. Yep. Yeah. The, to- the tallest average nation in the world. Do you know what the world's biggest dog was? <laughs> and how much it weighed? How much? It, uh, was it a... This is incredible. Uh, these are just things I've I, I actually heard on the radio. <laughs> Irish wolfhound and it weighed eight stone. <laughs> no, it's an English mustiff uh, and it weighed oh. 343 pounds. 343 pounds? That was that in stone, Paul? 340. Uh, 340. That'd be divided by 14, wouldn't it? It would be divided by 14. Oh, yeah. 20 stone. Over no. 20 stone. It'd be big. You're joking. 25 stone, roughly. Yeah, that's a big old that's, dog. That's bigger than the, but, but the you biggest and me dog, put together. The biggest yeah. dog ever uh, uh, in terms of height was a Great Dane, which was seven foot high. Can Shut up. No, seven seriously. Foot. <laughs> the only one that stood up, not when it was walking along all fours. 20. <laughs> a bit of horse, that's a horse. <laughs> Excuse me, mate. <laughs> That looks like a seriously, it's 2020. It was recorded seven foot high. So, in standing still, not standing up with its legs in the air. <laughs> oh, no, shut up. Horses aren't even that high, apart from their heads. <laughs> that was an extreme. That was a big one. No, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm disputing it. I'm going to get straight onto Google. You, you have a look. Well, there it is. It's 40 minutes of what we've been up to this week on uh, MTD CNC on the road. Join us again, same time next week uh, at six o'clock on Friday evening. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers, Paul. Thanks for 
listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.